there is a secret to building tanky champions, and I want to share that with you today, because even if you've been playing for a long time, you might not know this. What's up guys, MTG Jedi here. How you doing today? We are jumping in for a Raid Shadow Legends video today. Thank you for joining me on the channel and I'm excited to talk about this topic. Now, I have been re-gearing some champions this morning and a thought process occurred to me that I don't know if I've ever shared out loud before. It's just something that sort of comes natural to me, but was emphasized this morning in my gearing. So let me tell you what I'm talking about, okay? When you look at champions on your account, I feel a lot of the times we overlook their base stats when we're gearing them. And that is an essential component of the gearing process. What are their base stats and how does that affect how we gear them, okay? I, I noticed that on my account, I have a pretty tanky Pytheon, okay? And my gear is not very good, right? And one of the reasons why is because his base stats are really, really good. And this is just now becoming apparent to me how good his stats are in relation to a lot of other champions. 21,000 base HP is rare, okay? If we take a look at like HP based champions, we don't always get 21,000 base HP even on HP based champions. Let me show you an example. Okay, Tio is a great example of a support based champion who does not have as good of stats as our dude Pytheon, right? He's got only 20,000, like maybe 21, and you're pretty close there, and then 1,200 defense, okay? If we click over to Pytheon and we take a look at his base stats again, we have 21, 135, and 1,299, strictly better. And Tio is regarded as an amazing champion because of his kit. Okay, now if we look at legendary HP based champions, you are going to get some that have, you know, uh, above where Pytheon's based HP is, but only slightly above, right? The other HP based champions are going to be, you know, 23, 22, they're going to be right in that same range. So for a support based champion, Really, Pytheon's base stats are amazing, okay? And this was really highlighted for me because of Rio, okay? Now, Rio, if you take a look here, her base stats are not very good. She has a much lower HP, she has a much lower defense, and that makes it a lot more difficult to get the stats we're looking for. And that is going to be true for a lot of support-based champions. Like Lady Kimmy is another example from this faction. She has a little bit higher base HP, which I like, but then her defense is pretty low. So that makes it a little bit harder. But uh, the problem comes in when your HP is a little bit low and your defense is a little bit low. How do you build a champion that's still tanky and survivable. So that's what I want to cover today. I hope that this video will serve you well. And let's jump in to how we're going to do this, okay? So the very first thing that I want to say and just get out of the way because it, it's kind of obvious here, we want to be using defense percentage and um, HP percentage, gloves, and chest. So whenever you are coming into your inventory, probably the most common boots, or uh, excuse me, chest and gloves that you're going to use on your account is going to be HP percent and defense percent. I have a hundred pairs equipped right now. Some of them are not great. Admittedly, you see some common and uncommon pairs here because my account is still early here. 
but I wanted to showcase this strategy on this account rather than my main account, okay? So HP percent and defense percent are so probably the most important types of gloves and chests that you have on your account. Typically, you want those with speed because that is the main stat you're looking for. And then typically, you want those with either HP percent if it's defense percent or defense percent if it's HP percent. Okay, you want the opposite as the other substat. Sometimes you also want resistance or accuracy depending on how your what your champions are used for, okay? So if we look at Pythion here, I don't have any resistance or accuracy because I don't really need to build him for that, okay? Now, uh, you did see this accuracy chest on here, and I am building him for that in my build because of Brimstone, okay? Also, just take a look at this. This is one of my best piece of gear uh, on this account. Double speed, accuracy with accuracy. Um, you know, the rest of the substats are not great, but this is a really solid piece for my account where I'm at right now. Okay, so how do you build champions like this that are needing to be built tanky? Okay, well, when you have really good base stats like that, it's easy. Okay, you can just mainly get your things from your main stat here and then your sub stats. Okay, but when your stats aren't as good, is when we need to be. A little bit more careful in our gearing process so let's take a look at my brand new Rio build I worked really hard on this build today like uh, a lot of effort in getting more silver so I could upgrade all the pieces of gear all of that kind of stuff and we still have a little bit more uh, room to improve for the two accessories did not have silver for that but that's okay okay on this account I'm actually leveling up the top row on my main champions much sooner than I did on previous accounts and that's led to some stronger builds allowing me to progress in the game um, faster than I would normally okay so when you have these stats here and this applies really no matter what their base stats are unless you have a specific goal in mind like if you're if you're building an end game build for like live arena or 3v3 or something then you're gonna follow your own game plan for gearing okay if you're not doing that then this game plan is for you okay so if you're gonna take HP percent and here's another uh, pretty good pair of, of gloves for my account here all of the stats are good right Rio helps uh, you know rio is good with attack percentage we also have defense percentage those are the highest rolls with the sevens we have speed and a double hit on accuracy one of my best pairs of gloves on the account right now but you can tell that the main stat is hp percent so that means on the chest piece i should be going for defense percent basically if you want tanky stats on champions you need to have one chest that's HP percent or defense percent, and then one pair of gloves that's the opposite. So you want to alternate different stats on the gloves and chest. Okay. Now here, uh, here's another really important trick. If your base defense is low, you really want to go for defense on the ring and defense on the amulet. Now, your banner, you're probably going to have to do accuracy on a lot of your support champions because they need to land debuffs, okay? This is a really terrible accuracy banner. It is my only one. So that's the reason why we have it on here. That's an upgrade that I will be looking for immediately as soon as possible, okay? So that's the key right there is alternating the gloves and the chest 
and then finding the other defense stats that you need on your jewelry, okay? Some people might just know this inherently because you've been doing this, but I don't think it's ever been said out loud and I really wanted to share it with you. So let's see how, like, well, first of all, what are her total stats, okay? So we got almost 3K defense and then 52,000 HP. And if you've seen previous videos on the free-to-play account, you can go back and look at Rio's stats, okay? She was like 15,000 HP lower than this, and then maybe three, two or 300 defense higher, okay? A little bit slower, like five speed slower, that's not important. But what we were able to do with this build is like cut a couple hundred defense off while adding a ton of HP, okay? And so you need that balance, especially for your clan boss team, okay? Especially for your clan boss team. You want to shoot for 3k defense and 50k HP on your clan boss champions, unless you have an unkillable team, right? And with Pythion, our stats are even better than that, right? We have 3.3 and then 47k. So, well, almost basically 48, right? Now, I'm very excited to see what improvements this is going to bring to my clan boss team. So, in order to see this in action, let me give you some chests to open here and then some premise on the damage and we'll wrap up the video from there, okay? So, what are we going to get over here? Yes! And, okay, nice, nice. And then from Nightmare. All right, so that's pretty typical. And yes, there we go. Okay, so on Nightmare, I'm averaging 22 to 23 million. Occasionally, I will get 25 million. So with this build and Rio being more tanky, I should, in theory, be able to break my best damage on Nightmare today. So let's take a look at my team. Uh, my team is based on the Clover draft that Deadwood Jedi hosted. And I have a full video breakdown on that team and that strategy. I will try to link that at the end of the video if you didn't see it. This is the best team that's not unkillable. The best strategy in my opinion. Okay. Right now I have Pythion in here. He is my damage reduction champion. I do not have an ally protection champion. I tried out Trumbor. He didn't work out as good as Pythion, so I switched back. We have Apothecary for increased speed, Valerie for the shields, a little bit of healing, and the increased buff duration. We have Venomage for the damage reduction, poisons, decrease attack, and Rio and uh, Rio and Venomage do the main damage with our poisons. Okay, now. Let's jump in here and see. I'm not going to make you watch the whole run, even though it's not going to be that long. It's still going to be, you know, five or seven minutes or something. But you can see here at the beginning, we're going to put up all of our buffs. We're going to put up some debuffs. And then on the second turn, um, we're going to increase the duration of those buffs. Now, I don't have the speeds good enough that we're going to keep those buffs up the whole time, but that's what I'm working on, okay? That is what I'm working on. Also, I'm going to test, instead of Valerie in this team, I'm going to test the new Lizardman chick who I'm working really hard on getting because that would give me three Lizardmen in this team, a lot of counterattacks, and it would fill basically the same role. It will also make me feel really bad if she works out because then I wasted my time on a Valerie. But it is what it is. Valerie did get me to the easy two key on Nightmare. Maybe the new Lizardman chick, I can never remember her name. The new Lizardman chick can get me to um, the protection status that uh, I'm looking for and moving on to Ultra Nightmare. So we'll fast forward ahead here to the damage screen and we'll hopefully be able to see some improvement. It might be that it's not enough to make improvement on the clan boss team, but this was my goal and purpose in re-gearing Rio like this. And either way, she's going to be more tanky for other areas of the game like Arena, 
where she has been a little bit squish. So, let's see that damage. I'll be right back. Okay, I want to come in a little bit before the damage screen here because we're all the way at turn 43. We've passed my highest damage threshold. And Pytheon is reviving champions to keep us alive. Now, we just used that revive there, so we're not going to make it all the way to turn 50. But 28 million damage! Now we're cooking! Now we're cooking! So, Pytheon actually did a big chunk there, thanks to his blessing with Brimstone. And then, really, Rio and Venomage are carrying with the damage... Um, you know, around that same threshold, right? But Apothecary, no slouch over there, 3.5, and Valerie actually doing 2 million damage. So um, we might be much better off with the new Lizardman chick in Valerie's spot because she'll get a lot of counterattacks uh, due to the fact that we have those Lizardmen on our team. So this definitely worked. We added another 4 million damage on here just from changing a couple gear pieces on the Rio. And I'm going to try to do that same thing on Venomage, Apothecary, and Valerie. See if I can balance out their stats a bit and make even more progress. Thank you so much for watching. I'm MTG Jedi. Go check your champions on your account. Make sure that you're balancing their stats unless you have a good reason not to. And I'll see you guys in the next video.